growing up, when your mom and dad don't speak English, you have to do everything for them. I can't even do my homework. I'm filling out disability forms. Felipe Esparza, dude, you know, I got to know you before all this. Before all the fame and all the glamour and all the glitz and your HBO specials. How does that Felipe that I knew back in the day from Boyle Heights translate to the Felipe Esparza now who has an HBO special? Well, you remember that super interview we did when on the set of Taco Shop? Right. I told you a lot of stuff yeah. about my life. I had like a speech impairment also, so I mumbled a lot of words when I was scared. So they would laugh at that. And a lot of stuff that I told you on your show, right. I have never said before. Right. So it was like the first time I was actually honest with anybody. Wow. Because you made me so comfortable, like a homie. So I didn't really hold back, like, you know, I do the interview, trying to be serious, you know. You made me feel so comfortable, I told you everything. And that gave me a lot of confidence that when I, when I went to decide to write my comedy, I picked up sub subjects that I said during our interview. Like most Latino kids growing up, I thought my name was Yo, yo, you know how confusing that is at a dog park? Yo, 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 yo. One of the things, one of the struggles of Latinos, Latino writers, Latino comedians is, does our Latino experience translate to uh, non-Latino audiences? Will white people get our stories? Will they resonate and connect with our stories? And a lot of times we get insecure about it. But with you and your comedy, dude, I've seen you perform at you know the improv and the comedy store and all these places where I see white audiences laughing hysterically to things that happen in your life. So you think, you think that we're getting to a place now where white people can connect and understand your story even though it's not their experience? My one hour special trying like this is more like a one man show immigrant story. I, I kept true to my guns. You know, they didn't ever change anything. They didn't cut my hair. They didn't stop being Latino on stage. They didn't get rid of the accent. They didn't change my clothes. And because, you know, I wanted, uh, you're right about that. A lot of Latinos, especially stand-up comedians, young Latino writers, they worry about crossing over. And are they, gonna, are they gonna get me in the Midwest? Is my joke gonna kill in Peoria? I've been to Peoria. You know what? They worked over there, you know? So I started realizing, so I, I talked to Paul Rodriguez. I was opening up for him at the Hilton Hotel. And I was talking to him, we were sitting down. He goes, Paul, how did you cross over? Everybody talks about Felipe, you should cross over. He goes, let me tell you about crossing over. If you're, so, if you're funny enough, you don't need to cross over. Everybody's gonna cross over to you. I just wrote the jokes that I know, you know, about being a Mexican, you know, being from the hood, being a drug addict, being a, being a horrible father. Like, no, nope, everybody's doing jokes about being a horrible father. <laughs> everybody's talking about, oh, I'm a good father, give me that sitcom. No, man, I, I, I talk about being a horrible father. Like my last special, I said that I used to sell drugs to my son's new, fa <laughs> new father. Then I would take his money and give it to his mama's child support. Like, what kind of comedian has the, the guts to say something on stage? I think that's one of the reasons why your so your comedy resonates with the audiences because it's actually true to you. You're not sitting trying to make up something that you think people are gonna find funny and it speaks to like society today. No, you're speaking about your life and yeah. whether that translates to society today is up to other people to get. See, my comedy is so funny that if you take one joke out, it's gonna be offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if you were to read that joke without the other jokes involved, like, my jokes are the kind of jokes that you cannot pick out and put on paper without putting the rest of the stuff in. You can't my, read a transcription of your jokes. No, you, you have to hear it in your... Yeah, if you transcript my jokes and read them, you're going to walk out there sad. <laughs> I've been translating my whole life. English to Spanish, Spanish to English. I'd rather be bisexual than bilingual. It is easier on the tongue. Thank you very much, man.